cater to a topic is pushed by some producers and later it is pulled by some consumers. And the thing is, a topic itself is actually an abstract term, because technically on the disks we store data in partitions. So partitioning is a mechanism to distribute the topic data across multiple brokers in the cluster. It's also a, very, a way to parallelize the production and the consumption of messages which go through the system, meaning that partitioning is the key to scale the system horizontally. It's a very powerful mechanism. However, as with everything, nothing comes for free. And uh, Apache Kafka is a distributed system, and distributed systems are complex by their nature. And many things can go wrong, will go wrong. Luckily, when working with Apache Kafka, you don't really have to think much about the underlying complexity of durable messages and distributions. Uh, you can also delegate the questions of uh, high availability, scaling, and security to data infrastructure providers such as uh, Ivan, for example, so that you can sleep well at night. However, uh, there are still some things, and to gain the full flexibility of Apache Kafka, you'll need to put in some work and customize the behavior of the platform by using the provided abstractions. And one of the most important decisions that you will have to make when working with Apache Kafka is how exactly to partition the data. So together we'll look uh, today at how to balance the data across your Apache Kafka topic in the way that your system stays uh, fast and reliable. So by the end of this session, you will learn how exactly partitioning works in Apache Kafka. How many partitions you will need for your use case, or more importantly, how can you calculate that number? And what happens to producers, brokers, and consumers when data balancing gets skewed? And who of them is suffering the most? Also, how we can prevent that skew? And in case um, you couldn't really follow those recommendations, what exactly are your options to fix the badly balanced data across partitions? And uh, when talking about performance and architecture, uh, we need to be quite clear on the metrics which we are using to measure the performance. And especially in distributed systems, most often we have to find some kind of a trade-offs. We can't really get it all. We have to find a trade-off and should be quite clear on what metrics we are actually affecting when trying to tweak our system. Um, so today, in our conversation, we will have three important metrics. There are way more, of course, but those three will be coming again and again. So they are throughput, the number of messages which goes through the system in a given amount of time. Next one is latency, overall time it takes to process each message. Those two, throughput and latency, are interconnected. So by changing one, you most probably affect the other one and very likely not in a positive way. Uh, and the last metric, which is important for our today conversation, is lag. This is a delta and we measure it between the offsets of the records, the delta between the last produced message and the last consumer's uh, committed message. Or in other words, how far behind our consumers who read the data from Apache Kafka behind the producers who send the data to Apache Kafka. And in case you are still confused, I have this bus analogy where passengers are records in the system. So throughput is how many people can fit into the bus, a later the total time it takes for a traveler to complete a journey 
and the luck is how far the farthest passenger behind the uh, head of the arriving group. Keeping this metric in mind, let's start with a question. So, how many partitions you actually need for your topic? When you create a topic, you actually avoid answering that question. You will have this. It's important to consider and carefully determine the optimal number of partitions for your topic based on information that you have about your data and about your use. This is not the case where you want to copy the system, I don't know, maybe a friend or maybe need to find your own uh, number. And let's look to extremes, having to few partitions and having too many. Having too few partitions will negatively affect the performance and scalability. It's the uh, overall throughput of the data. And it's like having two traffic lanes instead of five. Naturally, the less traffic lanes you have, the slower will be the movement of the cars on the road. Also, it's very important that the number of a consumer group is limited by the total number of you have in your topic. One consumer instance can be maximally assigned to one uh, to one partition. So this one to one is the maximum scaling which we can get. And if you have more consumer instances than the total number of partitions, those consumer instances will be idle. And the reasons for that mainly because we also rely on the ordering of the message. So you can't really have two nodes reading data from the same partition. Um, Yes, so uh, it, because of these difficulties, a very common recommendation is to, when creating a topic, is to specify the number of partitions higher to project the growth of the system into the future. And indeed, you should set the number of partitions for your, for your topic somewhat higher thinking about the future. However, this recommendation usually or often I see gives a temptation to set the number of partitions significantly higher, um, just in case. And because of this, you have a different set of issues. Uh, for example, all admin operations uh, such as uh, backups and upgrades now will take more time to perform as you get more and more partitions. And the thing is, when you add a new partition, you also introduce replicas. So the increase of the number of items you have to take care of is not just one per partition. Usually you have a partition and a couple of in-sync replicas. So it grows uh, pretty steadily. Um, not to mention that with more partitions, consumers, you also risk to have more frequent consumer rebalancing. And consumer rebalancing, this is reassignment of partition ownership by consumers. So every consumer in the consumer group is um, assigned to one or more partition exclusively. And uh, when something happens and some of the uh, consumer nodes goes down, uh, a new one added, and sometimes we have to responsibilities uh, which consumer each partition. And that isn't that fast, so we usually try to avoid in it. So, good to be aware, having too many partitions can't come for free. But having too little number also is bad. So, where is the golden middle and how can we calculate it? And my advice would be 
to start with the end in mind. When on how questions you have, think how the data will be consumed uh, by the application and what is the throughput of your consuming applications. Measure the speed with which those applications can process a bunch of data and see what is acceptable load and also uh, how many of those consumers you will need to process the data in parallel. For example, if your anticipated read capacity is 1 gigabyte per second, uh, but your uh, single consumer can only process 100 megabytes per second, then you will need 10 consumers and therefore you will require 10 partitions. And this at least gives you the minimal number of partitions that you will need in your system. Set that number a bit higher, but also don't set it to extremes. Uh, if you are still in doubt how many you want, less or more, go for more. Normally that is advice, but no extreme values, because I honestly I see sometimes people just set just a lot, just in case, and then they don't have enough load and that load is predictable. And it's kind of weird. Why actually do you need that many partitions? Uh, number of producers don't truly really affect directly the number of partitions, so you can add more uh, producers in case producing data for some reason is slow. And when you are designing the system, uh, for the cases with heavy data load and complex data structures, maybe you can add not one partition, but two and make it more simple. Whenever you can actually go for simplicity, I think it really helps. Okay, so you spent some time, decided on the number of partitions, uh, and it was not easy, but you figured out that number. Now the question is, can you change the number of partitions later? Uh, and the answer is um, yes and no. So you cannot, so it's impossible to decrease the number of partitions for existing topic. However, if you want, you can add more partitions. Whether adding more partitions is a good idea or not depends how exactly you distribute data across those partitions. And in particular, if you are using keys for that. And if you're using keys, by adding more partitions, you add more headache for yourself. And we'll see that example later, uh, why it's, it's possible, but later, it's not just adding new partitions. Okay, so now moving on to how a partitioner works. And uh, let's start with the default partitioner. And there are three ways it determines where exactly to put your data into which partition. And uh, here on the left, I have, uh, on the left, on the left, I'm really bad with left, right? Um, so uh, on one side, I have a producer and on the other side, I have partitions distributed across multiple brokers. Uh, and when selecting a partition, the first thing the producer will look at if you explicitly specified the partition number for your records. Uh, usually, you don't want to do that, but if you have to, you can. I call it micromanagement and would rather discourage this functionality. However, for some use cases, this is very, very handy. Um, next, the partitioner will check for the key. If you didn't provide that number explicitly, it will look, do you have a key per message? Uh, and if the key is present, the producer will take the hash of the key, do the model on the available number of partitions, and then use that number to decide where exactly the value, the record should go. And the idea is that we want to have to the same key, the record with the same key should always go to the same partition. And this will guarantee that all messages which have the same key will appear in the same partition. 
uh, and will be stored in the same log file. This is what stands behind the partition, just a file where we always append data to the end of the file. And therefore, we will be able to guarantee the ordering of those records. So in distributed systems, you write data and you have different like servers, different locations where you store the data. And the problem is you write data here, here, over there. When you start treating the data, you might have a question, which record actually was first, which was second, which was third? And it's pretty difficult to figure out. I mean, you will have to spend a lot of computational power if you really want to figure out between different machines how this happens. But the simple solution would be to use the key to store data on which you need to keep in order in one partition. And then uh, because it's just a log file where we append data one by one, when we read the data, we can be sure that we read it in the same order as it was initially written there. Um, yeah. So now let's actually think, I have that number of partitions and that formula. What if we change? What if we decided to add extra partitions to our topic? And you are using the keys. So coming back to that question why it's not so easy to add extra uh, partitions. Um, if you are relying on keys for the record ordering, what happens there is that once you increase the number of partitions, the resulting partition number per key now will be different. So you ruined all that logic where the data should be going. So that's why it's not, um, let's say, it's not super straightforward um, to add extra partitions. Not impossible, we will see a code snippet how exactly to do it uh, with custom partitioner, but that's later. Um, okay, so what if you didn't specify the number of partition explicitly uh, and you also don't have keys? What then? This is where we actually ask Apache Kafka to distribute the messages across the partitions in the most effective and efficient way you know, performance and all that stuff, which we appreciate so much. And in the old days, we were using round-robin partitioner, uh, which was iterating across partitions and spreading the records one by one to achieve the best balance of the data. Important to understand that um, round-robin partitioner was not really sending like, you know, first item sent to the first partition, second item sent to the second and so on. No, that would be such an overkill and it would be so inefficient on the networking side and also overloading the brokers. So now, uh, the round-robin partitioner will batch, batch those records locally uh, and uh, it will accumulate the data. It will go first item, second item, third item, or like going there and keeping the batch. And then it will send those batches to the cluster, to the brokers. Um, and uh, it's a very nice way. It results in a nice and even data distribution. However, it has a problem. It's not exactly that efficient. I mean, we can get way more efficiency if we will do some more smart batching of the items, grouping the items and sending and kind of having the more power on how exactly, how will, what will be the size of the batch and the moment where we send it to the cluster. Um, and uh, this is exactly what a new partitioning strategy does, a sticky partitioning. I mean, it's not that new, it actually was introduced in Apache Kafka 2.4, so it's already for quite a while. Um, but uh, what sticky partitioning does, it will select a partition and then start accumulating records for that partition locally, for on one partition, not all of them like round uh, robin, but only for one. And then uh, it will wait for, it will be accumulating those records till one of two conditions will happen. Either we reach the maximum amount of time which we allocated for that process, or we reached maximum size of the batch. And then it will send that batch to that partition. Then sticky partitioner will select the next partition, again accumulate the data 
till one of those two conditions happen and send the next batch and so on. Uh, and uh, this, of course, doesn't result in that even distribution immediately. But over time, we can see that the data is still spread evenly across the partitions. And the advantage of sticky partitioning over round robin is that it significantly reduces the latency, like 50% reduction, uh, according to the benchmarks, uh, according to the ticket. And I will add those like in the resource materials if you want to check the benchmarks. And also it reduced CPU utilization by 5, 15%. So it's actually very, very massive improvement. So now we are using sticky partitioning mostly uh, by default. But as with everything else in life, again, nothing comes for free. Uh, and now you have to pay some more attention to other things, where this uh, even distribution by sticky partition uh, can result in quite uneven one, sadly. And we'll come back to that shortly. But for now, these are the properties uh, which you can uh, change for sticky partitioning. Uh, so you can influence uh, the linger MS and batch size. And linger MS by default is zero, which means it won't even wait for some accumulation of the data. It will be just sending the data uh, to the uh, cluster immediately. So you want to increase that value. The same for the batch size, uh, you want to adjust this value for your scenario and data distribution over time. We'll cover this again in a second. So, the default partitioner will use three mechanisms. Exact partition number, hash of the key, sticky partitioning. Like I of those options, but that's fine too. Because you can actually create your own partition partitioner, custom partitioning logic. And this is handy when you, for instance, can't use the key, but you want uh, maybe to combine or use other property to define how the data should be distributed or uh, to have a combination of different properties to, to kind of uh, understand where the data should go. Um, also, the custom partitioning logic, uh, we will see how it works later when you add extra partitions, but you still want to navigate uh, your logic of where the old keys and new keys should go. Okay, so now that we talked about options that we have, we need some motivation to select a good strategy. And nothing adds a good motivation than seeing when the stuff really goes wild and badly. And uh, by far the biggest challenge you can run into is unbalanced partitions. And let's imagine we have a topic with six different partitions and data distribution didn't really go, go nicely and evenly. And you might uh, think this is quite an extreme scenario, but actually not really. And uh, at Ivan we, we see from time to time these cases, so they are not super rare, unfortunately. Um, and because we also help our customers and they come with, uh, to us with questions why this happened and how exactly to fix this, uh, trust me, the reasons can be totally wild. But let's look uh, what, how exactly this situation will affect our system and who will suffer the most. So starting with producers. Um, Funnily enough, problems resulting from uneven data distribution, which usually like distribution of data is dictated by a producer, but it's pretty difficult to notice on the producer side. Um, uh, but there are still can be some issues. For example, if producer sends majority of data to some partition and the producer has to wait for acknowledgement before sending more data, this can slow down producer as well. Uh, producers will have to keep more data locally on the disk and uh, this potentially has issues on the storage of the producer and on the performance. However, most of the time producers are fine, especially if we compare to all the troubles which brokers and which consumers run to, into. 
And to understand the issue with the brokers, let's look how data is actually stored on the brokers. So each broker will contain multiple folders on the broker disk. And each of those folders will correspond to an individual. And a folder contains files, segments with the records. And each of those files is exactly those log files which I mentioned where we append data to the end of the log. And writing data to partition means adding data to an existing file or maybe creating periodically new files, new segments. And when we have a hot partition on the broker, this means a heavy load on the file system of the broker. And of course, our brokers are resilient. They can handle that load to some extent. But when the number of hot partitions per broker increases, um, the corresponding load on the broker also increases and the broker becomes slower, processing data slower, worsening all our metrics that we have. And the sad reality is that it will not be only affecting the partition in question, but it will affect all the partitions and all the replicas which are also unlikely to be stored on the same broker, which is totally not good. As a workaround, you can rebalance partitions to avoid any single broker to ha have too many of those. But as a workaround, it's only temporary before you get more hot partitions. And if the logic behind the balance, data balancing is flawed. Uh, now, consumers, and you can also decide whether consumers and producer or producers suffer the most. But about consumers, each consumer exclusively assigned to one or more partitions. So it will be reading data either from one or from more partitions. And if you scale it to the maximum so that we have as many consumers as we can have, it will be one to one relationship, one consumer, one partition, as in this picture. Um, if one of the partitions get significantly more data. That means that corresponding consumer has to read uh, way more data and it requires way more resources. And since you cannot add more nodes, so you cannot have two consumers processing data from one partition, no, this again will ruin the data ordering. We can't have that. So it's one to one the maximum. Um, so the only solution at that point of time would be to increase the size of the instance, so to uh, scale vertically. And nothing wrong is with vertical scaling. It's a totally valid approach. However, it has its limitations. Vertical scaling is not infinite. And also, if you are relying on some automated orchestration tools such as Kubernetes, most probably you are using the same type of instances for all of your nodes. And that would mean that because of this hot partition on a couple of those, you will have to use significantly more powerful instances, even though you know perfectly well that for the rest of the nodes, you will be under utilizing that power which is very sad for the world where we try to care about energy consumption. Um, and then even if you manage, if, if, the, if the node manages to process the data normally, you still have increased consumer lag. But the worst comes when consumer handle that load and it struggles to process it. And what happens is that consumer tries to use so much memory or so much CPU that is uh, killed out of memory except a new consumer starts eager to jump data load but then later the new consumer is also killed because it tries to consume too much data and it goes on and on and this just becomes a disaster. 
But why all of this happened? And more importantly, how can we prevent this issue of unbalanced partitions? Uh, the first reason is badly selected keys for your data. Selecting good keys is tricky, but it's so important. For example, imagine you have an online shop and you are selling cheese. Uh, so much cheese here market is amazing um, and product purchase relies on Apache Kafka topic and to distribute the data evenly and to guarantee the ordering of the records you decided to use user ID as the key and it all started well but soon you realize not all your customers are equal in their love to the cheese and their love to shopping and some of the customers will purchase cheese once a month but others will be really really into the cheese and they will make multiple purchases several times a day and you love those customers however your system doesn't um, so such users contribute to creation hot partitions and will significantly add more records what could have prevented this issue is instead of using consumer id as a key you could have used something like a um, a key which you have the less risk of going into overused um, uh, key. Uh, for example, a better fit would be probably to use some kind of purchase trip ID. So once you start purchasing something, you create some ID and you use that ID till the customer buys something. So um, the ordering of the events in the purchase trip are um, like they must be in order so we must to use key for that but also the amount of events per purchase trip is limited so which makes it a good key so when selecting the key pay attention to values that give you the highest what we call cardinality and still help you to maintain uh, the critical ordering okay maybe you don't use the keys but uh, you rely on the default partitioner to distribute records equally and you still see hot partitions. Um, and the reasons are multiple, but a uh, quite common one is that your system wasn't really ready for um, distribution of data over time. So keeping in mind the settings which we have uh, for the uh, CQ partitioner, uh, let's uh, look how um, on the timeline of the activity of the users uh, to see um, how the load is actually um, goes through the time. And as we have seen before, uh, the, there are two properties, linker mass and batch size. And in case you keep those properties as they are during the day, it will mean that you actually will send too many small batches. Actually, with linger MS equal to zero, you will send data immediately without even batching it. Uh, and that creates a higher load on the broker and on the network. Uh, so what you can do uh, to improve the situation is on one hand, increase the size of the batch to account to the load during the time. But you also will have to set the linger MS, that kind of time window, uh, big enough so that you can have enough time to accumulate the records, but at the same time, not too big so that during the night you don't really have uh, your customers waiting because you're just trying to accumulate bigger batches. Um, so, and in this case, you kind of have a good balance between the time for the day and the time for the night. However, if you even do this correctly, there is one potential issue which can result in a huge partition. And that is some people, some smart people with an innocent goal to just kind of use some properties which will accommodate all possible scenarios. What they will do, they will set batch size really, really high and linger mass very, very small. So ideally that kind of combination um, works well for the night and for the day. But it has one issue, and that issue happens when we have unexpected data peaks. For instance, if the producer has to restart and then it tries to send all the data uh, which it has, uh, then uh, all the data will go at once into a single 
partition. So you need to be very careful to use all of the, um, uh, the really big values. But even if you did that correct, there is another issue uh, which, with a sticky partitioning. And this issue was actually fixed already in Apache Kafka, but run into it, so I wanted to cover. Uh, so let's imagine that one of the brokers is slow. Uh, it suffers from hot partition or something else. And the sticky partitioning, when it will be sending the data, it will select the partition and then uh, send it to the broker. And it will do it, but if you are waiting for acknowledgement for the broker, then it will select uh, the broker, still wait for acknowledgement, but start accumulating the data. But because we have a very slow broker, so we accumulate data and we accumulate data uh, and the broker is still silent, didn't reply to us. And then the broker replies finally and we send all the data and it results that we send significantly more data to the broker which was already suffering from the data load or from such other issues. And this is uh, not really good. So uh, in Apache Kafka 3, there are like uh, op um, options how you can fix that issue. Um, so now we have this uh, mechanism to allow broker or to allow producer to adapt to the broker performance. So seeing that some of the brokers are slower, the producer will send less data to those slow brokers. Um, and also to introduce some kind of timeout. So if the broker doesn't reply very soon, then we drop the broker and move to the next one. Uh, for if you have older version of Apache Kafka, my question would be, <laughs> why don't you update? Uh, but also you can try and increase LingerMS to fix this issue or rebalance the hot partitions across your broker. So no single broker has a lot of those hot partitions. So it's not really way slower than other. Other issues of unbalanced partition, maybe you are uh, you had low number of partitions at the start, then you added more partitions, but this didn't completely fix the issue. Also, the fetch side on the consumer side also affects, maybe you can uh, play with the fetch size, how many data you are reading by the, your consumer. Same goes with compression. Compression can help you also with the performance. Um, but to stay proactive, uh, you will have to do some monitoring and uh, measuring the state of your system to see when the reality and uh, uh, the expectations really deviate. Um, and you have plenty of different metrics. These three I just like because they show on the hot partition side. So consumer lag is just one of those metrics which I think almost everyone is using. Um, but also you can look for under replicated partitions and under replicated partitions usually indicate that you again have too big partition, uh, a hot partition and also the uh, average latency and the maximum latency when they are too far apart, you know that something is not going well. Okay, so, but what if it's too late for good practices and uh, something happened? the data is not balanced well, what can you do? Um, some ideas going from the easiest one to the more complex one. First of all, if you don't use the keys, still add more partitions. I know that some um, companies discourage that, but whenever I am talking and in my opinion, adding new uh, more partitions when you don't have keys isn't evil. Um, and especially if you have reasonable data retention period and you can, of course, increase immediately consumers so you can have a bit more breeze air there in the data. Um, so if you use partitions and one or two keys hot, you can still add more partitions. But the problem is that you will have to maintain now the state and have some kind of custom producer to that. So, for example, you have this hot key and you want to take the data for that hot key and bring it into a new, freshly created extra partition so that all the data goes separately from all your rest of the data. Uh, and you have to maintain the state because you want to keep the old data where it was before 
according to the keys. So the key, and you remember that formula, how we calculate where the data according to the key goes. So in this case, you have a custom partitioner. And if you is hot, say bananas, you do your magic there and bring it into a separate partition. Uh, but if not, you are using a similar formula to this, but you take account you actually decrease uh, increase the number of partitions. So you try to compensate so that you have always the same partition per key. If you have way more hot partitions, workarounds are no longer possible. This is a point where you want to make substantial change to your logic. You want to take all the learnings which you made, all the mistakes considered, and create a new topic with a new partition and migrate. Um, and this will be helpful not only for rebalancing the data, but also for disaster recovery, for scaling up and down and changing the schema. So this is something which uh, I think um, any people who use Apache Kafka uh, have to be ready for. And of course, there are different techniques how you can avoid uh, trying to migrate the data from the old topic to the new one. But uh, when you try to prevent and to be perfect, trying to find all perfect those configurations, that actually can lead to premature optimization, which we know is not really good. So if you um, maybe instead, instead of avoiding the change, we can embrace it. So the top learnings from this session to leave you with, uh, when you're looking for the optimal number of partitions, uh, think how the data is consumed by your consumer applications um, to find the good key, look at the key with highest cardinality, which ensures critical ordering. Uh, also, um, keep in mind data distribution over time, observe and monitor and be ready for the change. Um, this is a link uh, with some extra information. There is also another, um, there is a resource where Actually, me and my colleague, uh, an engineer from Ivan, we are discussing what to do and how to rebalance uh, the data, how actually how to migrate, let's say, how to migrate from the old topic to the new one. Uh, it's one hour talk from Confluent. In case you want to migrate, you can check it out as well. Um, and uh, yeah, if you are using Apache Kafka or any other open source databases. You can also check ivan.io. This is website of the company where I work and we offer a platform with 11 different open source solutions, Kafka, Postgres, MySQL, uh, Grafana, ClickHouse, and all the integration between those systems to make it easy to create end-to-end um, -end, um, uh, solutions which you have using your favorite open source projects. With this, thank you so much. And I am all ears to any questions you have. If you're very shy to ask questions now, you can also find me later. I don't speak French, uh, <laughs> but I speak some other languages. use some kind of orchestrator so, such as uh, Kubernetes mm -hmm. or um, Docker Swarm and uh, we have the auto scaling features that come with it so my first question would be uh, how do you recommend implementing auto scaling uh, for app you see uh, auto scaling is based for example of the CPU consumption of our uh, service and obviously if our service is consuming uh, data from Kafka, so uh, we could ac activate this auto scaling mm -hmm. because we don't we don't know exactly how much data will will come, and that's the reason why we use this feature. So, what do you recommend implementing? If you recommend implementing this uh, this uh, auto scaling feature. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. So I think that in Apache Kafka, so of course, uh, Kubernetes and Terraform, you can use those tools when working with Apache Kafka as well. However, when it comes to particular in this 
particular situations, you can't really auto scale it. And the reason of that is actually, again, mainly the ordering of the data. So you might be wondering why we actually have to deal with it. Can't we really automate it? And I mean, we have plenty of organizations who offer this managed versions of Apache Kafka. Those organizations will do the automated tools for, for example, rebalancing the hot partitions across uh, different brokers. So at Ivan, we do that. But when it comes to rebalancing data across partitions, this is a very, let's say, delicate operation, which you can't really uh, automate unless you know what are your constraints on the data. Because if you're using the keys, so you know that data across partitions are arranged by the key, let's say, yeah, for example, for this purchase strip. So you can't really have an automated system which will then take the data and reshuffle, adding like extra resources and then put some the data on the extra uh, servers. Because you will ruin that delicate system, ensuring that whatever you put into the Apache Kafka, and then when you read it, um, you consume the data as it is expected, expected to go. As again, like this is maybe a challenge of distributed systems, where again, we can't really, we have to sacrifice with something. So Apache Kafka is designed to have this minimal latency. It's so fast. Uh, but again, like uh, this ordering of the records, you don't really maintain this information or like you can, of course, try to do that. And then you can kind of try to automatically like put the data and have some sophisticated mechanism. Uh, but that will consume some efficiency. So we don't do that. Uh, so that's like for partitioning. Sadly, Kubernetes will not help because I, I mean, maybe in the future we will have some mechanism. Right now we don't have it, sadly. Great, thank you so much.